isang mainit talaga na issue ngayon na ang climate change. Kasi hindi lang ito nakaka-apekto sa ating bansa, kung hindi sa buong mundo. Kaya naman maraming maraming mga organization na gumagawa ng efforts and programs para maiwasan na ah, ang... Uh, At syempre matulungan na rin kung baga kung may mga uh, bansa ang problema nito. Kailangan natin ng mga solutions para maayos niya ang problema nito. Yes, of course. Kaya very special ang ating guest ngayon dahil siya ay mula sa World Watch Institute. We have here today sa studio Sir Alexander Ox, ang Director of Climate and Energy from the World Watch Institute. Good morning, Sir Alexander. Good morning. Ms. Mili Prima, you can talk about first about climate change as a whole because a lot of our viewers aren't really that aware of the problem of climate change that uh, we are experiencing at that, and that we can experience. And this is really a problem worldwide yes. that people don't know enough about it. So it is very important uh, that the general public learns more about climate change. So I really welcome the mm -hmm. opportunity to be here. Um, the Philippines are one of the countries that we know are already impacted the most by climate change in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very unfortunate that most of these impact will worsen over time. So it's really time to act. and. I'm very happy to have been invited by the President and Senator Alvarez, uh, the Climate Change Commissioner, to come here and talk a little bit about what we can do. Yes, actually we recently read that the Philippines is actually the third most at-risk country for climate change. So that's really a pressing concern. What are some of the ways that climate change will affect the Philippines, aside from the weather becoming hotter? That's generally the perception of the public today. That's correct. The weather overall globally will become warmer. That's why we're talking about global warming. But I really prefer the climate change mm -hmm. because it was, will have a lot of impacts uh, on the weather systems that making our, our weather generally more extreme, not just warming. So what are these in the Philippines? Storms will become more frequent. They will become more intense. Droughts will be uh, more often generally precipitation, what we call yes. precipitation, rainfalls uh, will change. Uh, seasonally will become heavier and then you have seen some of those impacts already in yes. the presence and the, 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 the recent past which yes. is floods and many other, we've ma many other serious this, issues. Uh, lately actually because during the summer season we'd experience some rainfall and this is very strange because during the summer it's really supposed to be really hot here in the Philippines and then uh, often it would, uh, the ra rain would pour during the summer season so that's, is, this is something that's uh, connected to climate change sir? Yes it is. So. We need to be a little bit careful because there have always been storms, there have mm -hmm. always been droughts, there have always been floods, but it's really about the intensity and the frequency of these extreme weather events that are uh, um, uh, made much more worse by climate change. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your organization. What is the World Watch Institute all about? We are, I think, the oldest kid on the block, if I may say. Uh, well, I think we're the oldest environmental think tank uh, mm -hmm. on the planet. We're around for almost 40 years now. Um, and we have different programs. Um, I'm heading the climate energy uh, program. We're also working on population issues, gender issues, uh, agriculture, uh, environment and society. So we have a broad spectrum of, of, of issues we're working on. Maybe we could talk about some of the projects that you've already done in the past connecting, uh, to connected to climate change. Yeah, sure. So um, actually, uh, the, I met Senator Alvarez, the climate change commissioner, yes. at the last United Nations climate conference. And we were on the same panel presenting our thoughts and I presented uh, results from work we've done in Central America and in the Caribbean and in Africa uh, and he came to me afterwards and he said you know this I want you to do this for my country okay this is this is great this kind of methodology that you have yes. developed transitioning the energy systems away from fossil fuels towards domestic renewable clean energy yes. sources so that's why I'm here and I presented some early thoughts and we're hoping to get this program off the ground together. Yes. So there really are a lot of opportunities for this program to push off in the Philippines. It is a sustainable program, if ever it does push off here. Look, I, I, we have done a lot of analysis worldwide, and any country of the world has, has either solar or wind or biomass or geothermal or hydro sources. Now, your country, the Philippines, has all of the above. Yes. So you're really spoiled in this regard. So there is, it's an interesting topic because on the one hand, you're impact or you are already impacted the most by climate change if we do not act on the other hand the Philippines has better opportunities really than almost every other country in the world mm -hmm. to really become serious about it and to become an example for what needs to be happen worldwide to so become a real leader so we really have all these sources for renewable energy it's just how we use these opportunities what are the ways that you see that we could uh, maximize the opportunities that we have uh, when it comes to the renewable energy in, in the Philippines so 
one thing is important, you're already a leader in many mm -hmm. regards. There's a lot of hydro power and there's a lot of geothermal power. But then over the last 10 years, ge the geothermal power actually went down. The, the new investments haven't happened. Now, mm -hmm. the government has put a lot, uh, out a lot of ambitious plans and it's now really about implementing those. Wind and solar, for example, you have tremendous resources for wind and solar, also for biomass. And there's very, very little electricity coming from that yet. That's on the, re on the production side, producing yes. energy. On the consumption side, there's also huge <coughs> potentials in really saving energy and using energy more efficiently. Mm -hmm. The key thing in the Philippines is that it's not just an environmental issue. This is really my key message. Yes, climate change is one of the most important topics in the century, particularly in this region of the world, so we need to address it. But it's also really about our societies and our economies. And if you have a country Philippines that pays about 10% of its economy, of its GDP for the import of fossil fuels, there's a much smarter way to develop. So it's, it's you can hit, you can uh, catch two birds with, with one, one stone, I think you say in English. You know, so at the same time address climate change as well as find a more sustainable energy system that's actually really good for the economy. Mm -hmm. Yes, and actually we have been having problems lately in Mindanao. We have been running out. Um, a lava of Lanao, like there's a lake where the hydro plants have been encountering some problems. So there are several, they have, there have been several recurring brownouts there. So hopefully this will push off because there are other sources of energy as well. But then like, aside from that, it's not just the government, it's not just the organizations, it's also the people. Um, we also have to do our own efforts. So what can an ordinary person do to uh, prevent climate change? Lots of things. I mean, you can keep the car at home every now and then and take public transportation mm -hmm. or walk or you know we're all becoming more and more comfortable in our lifestyles so it's not healthy to set, just sit the whole day either in the car or at yes. the desk so again you you have a lot of solutions where you can do something that's good for your body or for yourself as mm -hmm. well as address climate change you can eat healthier food you can eat local foods from local farmers so that food doesn't need to be transported yes. halfway around the world there's really many things I, I really urge people, including my own family and mm -hmm. my own friends, to inform themselves about what they can do um, and, and contribute also, as you say, as, as the people in, in, in a bottom-up movement and not just in a top-down government. It's really both things that we need. Okay, so maybe lastly, you, have a mes I mean, you could give a message to our, all our viewers this morning so they could do their part and, of course, uh, to the government as well, a message from you. So my, my number one request really would be for people to just get informed. I don't want to sit here and lecture, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to help people inform themselves about what they can do. There's many websites out there, starting really with websites that even address kids, so that in early education they are learning how important it is to become uh, serious about the environment and play our own share in it. And then the other thing is, you know, the other key message really is Renewable energy, energy efficiency, clean energy technologies are not a luxury toy as so many people still look at it. They look at it and say like, you know, it would be great, you know, but it's something for the rich countries, you know. Yes. It would be great to have if we, if we could just afford it. The truth of the matter is we're living a lifestyle today that we cannot afford and we're seeing the first consequences of it and it will become more and more difficult to yes. live in this world. So we need to start to act and to afford actually a, a better life and a life that in the long term is going to be cheaper and smaller. Good for our society. Yes, that's very correct actually. It's like a long term investment for the Philippines as well because when we produce uh, renewable energy, it'll be a lot cheaper for the households because, like right now, uh, electricity bills are also a, a major problem. It's rocketing. Yes, <laughs> so yes, 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 yes. Yes. So hopefully, you know, this talk will inspire our viewers as well to do their part because we do have, we do kind of have the mentality that, you know, we can, as a, as a solo person, we can't really do much. If, if, we, if we're the only ones acting, but then mm -hmm. if we all do our individual roles, then we can really create a huge impact in, in changing this global change, yeah. in changing this, in making an, a change, change. when and it comes global problem. to... Yes. yes. So <laughs> there, you, thank you very much, Mr. Alexander Ox, and uh, I'm sure all of our viewers are very, more, uh, are very informed right now about the current situation and the current problem that uh, we are experiencing with regards to climate change. Thanks for having me. Yeah.